Welcome to the Black Sparrow Media Internet Broadcast Network. Listening to Linux in the Hamshack. LHS is a podcast about Linux, open source, and amateur radio for everyone. Now, here are your hosts Russ, K5TUX, Cheryl, W5MOO, and Bill, NE4RD. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. You have tuned in to episode number 459 of Linux in the Hamshack, the most terrific amateur radio podcast on the internet. And this episode is our Weekender. It's the 88th edition of the Weekender, big number 88. If you're into old school NASCAR, that was Daryl Waltrip's number in the Gatorade car. I don't know why I remember that, but okay. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I really don't like NASCAR. Back in the day, I used to watch it, but it's just not really that interesting anymore. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and get into it for today on our Weekender Edition, where we talk about amateur radio events that are coming up and amateur radio contests. We also talk about open source conferences and things that are coming up in the future and lots of other things that you can do in both worlds, inside your ham shack and out. And then we get down into hedonism, all the good stuff that makes life worth living. So let's go ahead and get into it. But before we do that, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm Cheryl, W5MOO. And I'm Bill, NE4RD. And Bill introduces himself last, but starts talking first, because he's going to tell you all about the upcoming amateur radio contests. Yeah, and these contests come from contestcalendar.com, the most contesty calendar that there is, dot com. Anyway, <laughs> this, is, uh, this weekend we have, jeez, uh, I didn't even... Get that first letter in there. Uh, the Bart G HF Riddy Contest. It uh, runs from 0200 Zulu March 19th to 0159 Zulu March 21st. Uh, bands there are 80 meters through 10 meters. Modes, of course, Ritty. And then what is it? It's a 48-hour contest with an emphasis on accuracy. The contest forms around two of the four contests in series for a single operator championship. Now they do, uh, so the exchange includes the time in GMT. So, uh, yeah, you have to pass the time. So you got a lot of, a uh, lot of numbers to pass back and forth, uh, in every contact and all that stuff is used for your log checking. So it's, uh, a, a cr- it really checks the validity of your log. So it's really a fun one to do. Uh, let's see here. We also have the uh, F Fox nine alpha alpha cup, the F nine AA cup, and it runs from 1200 Zulu, March 19th to 1200 Zulu, March 21st bands. There are again, 80 meters through 10 meters. Uh, mode on this one is single side band. And the details of this one is, uh, the purpose of the competition is to make radio clubs around the world. And also the F eight URC station heard. Uh, the purpose of the radio club is to train amateur radio amateurs and training for competition is also an activity that a radio club must allow it. Uh, let's see, in order to encourage the youngest licensees to participate, we have added the two meter band to allow the effective participation of class three MOs in France. Cause obviously if you didn't know F F nine <laughs> is a France prefix, but of course being on HF, it's a worldwide contest. Um, uh, by granting the multiplier point for foreign equivalents, a specific classification is planned and the SWLs, which are the shortwave listeners, also have their ranking and there can therefore participate. So if you just want to listen in and log contacts, you can also do that. Uh, and let's see, we do have a state QSO party challenge this weekend and it is Virginia. So uh, get out there and work Virginia this weekend. Uh, let's see, contest next weekend, we only have one to really mention because it's a big one. It's the CQ Worldwide WPX contest. That's right. It's the prefix contest. And it runs from 0000 Zulu March 26th to 2359 Zulu March 27th. Bands there are 160 meters through 10 meters. Mode, single sideband. So, hey, you can do it. Just talk into that squeezy button thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, details 48 hours single operator stations must operate a 30 
may operate 36 of the 48 hours. Off times must be a minimum of 60 minutes, during which no QSO is logged. Multi-operator stations can operate the full 48 hours. Uh, it's always a fun one to work because you can work pretty much everyone because you're trying to collect prefixes. That's the uh, the front end of everybody's call sign. So like mine's NE4 and, uh, you know, Russ's is K5 and the club's is a- AF0. So a lot, of, a lot of good prefixes to collect. And, of course, it's a good international contest because there's all kinds of prefixes out there that establish the uh, identities of the DXCCs. Uh, let's see, uh, state Kisa party challenges. Uh, there are none, probably because they want to stay away from this monster contest that is occurring all weekend on the band. So <laughs> no state is willing to uh, have their uh, state Kisa party in the midst of that contest. And that's all we got for these two weeks. What do we got for special events? Well, for special events, we have a few. There, there's quite a few more than this, but I picked, you know, and choosed some of the ones that look pretty interesting. The first one is the 120th anniversary of the Rockville Bridge. We talked about this one on the last weekender, but it's still upcoming. So I'll go ahead and mention it again. Uh, this is operating from March 19th through the 27th, 1400 Zulu to 0200 Zulu daily. Calls on is Whiskey 3 Romeo, and it'll be on various frequencies and various modes. The Rockville Bridge is the longest stone masonry arch bridge ever built. With 48 70-foot spans with a total length of 3,820 feet. It is made of 220,000 tons of stone that took 800 workers two years to build. The bridge crosses the Susquehanna River about five miles north of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So you could go visit this thing and then go to Hershey and get some chocolate. The eastern end is the Rockville and the western end is just south of Marysville. It was completed in 1902 by the Pennsylvania Railroad. It remains in use today by the Norfolk Southern Railway and Amtrak's Pennsylvanian route. The bridge was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1975 and was designated as a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark in 1979. And there's pictures of it if you go to the links in the show notes. And it's pretty cool. Uh, This next one, for no particular reason, National Quilting Day happens to be March 20th. And this will be operating from 0800 to 2000 Mountain Daylight Time. I did not bother to do the <laughs> calculation on that um, because I don't know. Well, UTC doesn't change. So Mountain is, what, seven hours, right? So that makes it March 20th, uh, 1500 Zulu to 0300 Zulu on the 21st, something like that. Anyway. Yeah, it's Daylight like, Time. It's six hours right now. Just like we're five hours apart between okay. me and you. That's okay. People will figure it out. Anyway. Yeah. Do the math, people. You can <laughs> eight, eight, o'clock, <laughs> 8 o'clock a.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. There you go. Uh, the call sign on this is November 0Q. Frequency will be 20 meters. And phone is what they'll be operating on. National Quilting Day, Saturday, March 19th. So they're celebrating it on the 20th for whatever reason. <laughs> See QST for information. Link will be in the show notes, guys. If you or your special someone quilts, get a QSL card by making contact with N0Q. They will appreciate the thought. Thanks for reaching out on 20 meters. So there you go. I'm bet, I'm betting the QSL card has a quilt on it. I, th- I think that's money. Money in the bank. <laughs> uh, let's see. Then there's the Walk for Water Charleston 2022. This will be on March 26th all day. 0000 Zulu to 2359 Zulu. Call sign is Whiskey for Whiskey or Water for Water. Bands will be, or frequencies will be 7.216, 14.074, 14.316, and perhaps others, modes digital and phone. Around the world, more than 2.2 billion people do not have access to safe water. Water Mission International raises funds and awareness to fight the global water crisis by walking so others don't have to. And there's obviously an associated ham radio special event links to the event itself and more information about walk for water will be included in the show notes so check it out was something funny no sorry i just like burped and hiccuped at the same time (laughs) (laughs) Uh, apparently i was way too close to the microphone when i did such (laughs) Uh, very good well that's okay it makes up for my little snafu in the last episode so (laughs) 
Anyway, moving on, we have some announcements, and these are the same announcements from the last weekender. I, as a representative of Linux in the Ham Shack, will be attending a couple of local ham fests here in southwest Missouri. First one is the Ors Ham Fest on March 26th. That goes from 8 to noon, local time. I will be doing a talk on Linux in the Ham Shack, and information about the Ham Fest is linked in the show notes. And then there's the Smart Ham Fest, which is the Southwest Missouri Amateur Radio Club's Ham Fest. That's in Springfield, Missouri. It'll be gone June 4th from 8 to 1 local time. And a link to that, of course, is in the show notes. I'm not doing a talk there, but I will have a booth. So Linux in the Ham Shack will be represented. And we're looking at some some new merch items. We might We might have something that's kind of interesting and might be actually interesting to people to actually have other than drinkware. So because because we like drinkware because we're all alcoholics <laughs> but uh, uh if if you don't drink or if you uh, want something else that's that's merchandise that, that might actually have some utility we have a, a new idea and we'll let you know more about that coming up and let's see for a linux in the ham shack ham radio challenge i put out check out ham shack hotline a pbx system for amateur radio operators i touched on this a little bit in the last episode and we'll be touching on it more in the future as i get more into it but it looks kind of interesting. It's a project. It is Linux-based, and if you want to experiment with it, there's lots of information and a link to where you can find out more about the Hamshack Hotline project will be in the show notes. So check it out. So moving away from amateur radio topics, we're going to slip on into the open source. And if anybody was watching Saturday Night Live last weekend, you could cram this in your mom hole or your dad hole. It was such a stupid skit, but one of those ones you can't forget, right? Yeah. So... All right, Bill, go ahead and tell us about a distribution you can try. If you were listening to the last episode, you heard about this distribution already, but Bill's going to dive a little bit deeper into it this time. Yeah, this is, uh, of course, a Sparky Linux Rolling Edition. Uh, Sparky Linux is a GNU uh, Linux distribution created on top of the Debian GNU Linux operating system, or GNU if you like to call it that. Uh, Sparky is fast, lightweight, and fully customizable OS, which offers a few versions for different users and different tasks, such as uh, a fully featured OS with a lightweight desktop environment, which works out of the box to contain a selection of pre-installed common use software for home users, a minimal GUI edition with open box window manager pre-installed only with a basic software installed for users who who's want to configure the OS desktop as they want. Yeah, this cut and paste doesn't get any better. Uh, on top of the Debian plus any uh, desktop environment or window manager, uh, there's also uh, three special editions for different tasks. There's a game over for gamers, which looks a little bit old, not, not current that I could tell. Uh, multimedia for audio, video, and HTML pages creators. Um, using XFCE, a rescue edition for fixing broken OS or so uh, using OpenBox, and there's a minimal CLI version with no X server at all. So if you just want the command line only, it's probably a, a version you'd want to get. Uh, Sparky supports about 20 desktop environments and window managers, giving you the freedom of choice, having in mind that your computer is made for working, having fun, entertainment, keeping in touch with friends, and many, many other things. Sparky is available in a stable flavor, which is the best choice for to change your existing other operating system and try GNU a Linux distribution without the need of installation and changing your computer partition table. And there's also the Sparky Rolling Edition, which is the one we actually talked about in the last episode, and we gave it a, a, a stellar 4.9 LHS readiness score of, uh, and is targeted for more advanced users who's, yeah, yeah this is still bad, <laughs> who aren't afraid of a little less, oh, geez, who aren't afraid of a, of whatever, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to read it because it's so bad how it's written. Anyway, it's a little less stable. So uh, because you are inside of the testing branch, you're inside of the bookworm branch of uh, of Debian, uh, but it is not the unstable branch. It's just the testing branch. So that's something that's already gone through the unstable branch and it's been graduated. So your packages should be probably uh, uh, good enough, uh, yeah, with, with an occasional hiccup to be expected with any rolling edition uh uh, Linux distribution, but anyway, that's a that's a Sparky Linux. So uh, check it out if you uh, if you care to over this next couple of weeks, and give us some feedback if you uh, if you try it out and like it. All right, very good. I think I will actually try it out myself and see how it goes. I mean, it's based on Debian, so I'm sure it'll feel just like right at home 
old, old home week for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to <laughs> spend more time trying out Arch, actually. I'd, I'd like to, I've got a spare computer. I, well, I don't want to call it spare. It's not, I mean, <clears throat> but I do have a computer that's currently doing nothing. And I, I do want to put Arch on it and see how that goes. So I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of trending towards Arch right now just because I want to get my feet wet with it more, more than I have in the past. I have used Manjaro a, a little bit, but there's, you know, with Garuda and Endeavor and some of the other different arches that are that are around, I, I'd like to get more into it. So maybe I'll bypass Sparky for right now and do something with Arch and then come back to it. So yeah, try Endeavor. Endeavor is the uh, uh, well, you know, the more sophisticated Arch users. <laughs> it's closer to the Arch Arch. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm using the command line on that, just so you know. Like my thing last time on Garuda was I haven't used the command line to install a package. Well, in this I have. So uh, Endeavor is a little bit different and uh, maybe in a good way. Maybe in a good way. I, th- I like the way the, uh, the, yay, uh, yeah, the yay package manager for the AUR stuff works. Um, yeah, I, th- I think you'll be probably more interested in the way Endeavor works because it is slightly uh, – so it's different. It, 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 I think it, I think it's good though. All right, I'll give that a shot, and I'll have to run KDE Plasma Desktop on top of it just just because. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, just a little bomb. Yeah, you can install. There, so. I, think there's, I think they have like uh, ten in the online installer to ten different uh, GUIs that you can install. So I think KDE is one there. Obviously, I mean GNOME is. I think I picked GNOME, so that's that's the one I'm running on mine. And you hated GNOME. If I asked you five years ago if you wouldn't use GNOME, you're like, ah. I know. Get, get I, me a know I, <laughs> I like the simplicity of it. That's the nice part. It just it just works. Um, yeah. KDE is better in general for desktop usage, but I don't really use it like a – I mean, I use it like a desktop, but I only use it to launch apps. So I'm not really – I don't really care about all the other things. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's – I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. No, I get you. <laughs> I like Mate too and XFC because they're just simple. They just get out of your way and they just work. Um, yeah. I'm still trying to decide whether there's what it is in KDE that I need to have. And I haven't found that yet. Yeah. See, so yeah, I like XFC and Mate as well. The one, that, the one that I never got into was Cinnamon. I don't, I don't understand people who like Cinnamon because it, to me, it seemed like it obfuscated everything. Like, um, it tried to be like so slick and smooth and everything, which it didn't do anything. It just felt very limited to me. Yeah, I, I don't I don't recall having that experience. I, I think that's the one that comes on Peppermint OS. Uh, I thought they used Cinnamon as their desktop, so that would have been my experience with it. And it just reminded me a lot of just the kind of you know Mate GNOME GNOME two looking feel and stuff like that. Um. But yeah, there's some of those uh, some of those ones that have like the menus don't actually have any like you can't type in the menu to find your application, which I hate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's kind of like how I use even Windows. So <laughs> that's why GNOME GNOME works great for me because that's literally I just hit the super key and I start typing the app and hit enter and that's it. You know, as soon as I see it as the first option, it becomes what I do, and that's that's like my only interaction. I don't use the, the mousey mouse to, to launch apps. So like, yeah, so a bar doesn't help me and you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. That pretty much describes my workflow too. And I just felt cinnamon really constricting and I, I trashed it pretty early on. So moved on to other yeah. things. Yeah. Pretty much if an OS does not have that binding for the start menu, I mean, it might be a windows thing, but you know, damn it, it just works. It's, it's just functional. I know Mac is a very simple thing. It's like, what is it, like option space or something like that? It brings up the highlighter bar thingy. I can't remember. Yes. There's a Mac shortcut. That's yeah. the same way. It's option space. It brings up the spotlight search. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that works very similar. And I, you know, when I was using Mac, that was the same thing. It was like, Oh, you know, that's just the way it just the way it works. All this other crap is stupid. You know, <laughs> it's actually command but yeah. space, but command space. Okay. Yeah. I know it's one of the stupid, stupid, you know, keys <laughs> in the bottom left there. So right. Cause everything Mac OS does is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get out of the world of stupid and let's get into the world of open source events. And we'll bring Cheryl on here to tell you what kind of open source events are coming up over the next couple of weeks. Our first one is the Open Source Community Day. It's March 24th. It's online and it is free. 
The information is Open Source Community Day is a free virtual conference for developers working with the latest open source technologies. Open source development is impacting industries like finance, manufacturing, retail, and others, bringing improvements and significantly enhancing quality of life. Community collaboration has powered numerous innovations from better and more efficient manufacturing to new ways to have more meaningful interactions with customers. It's clear the trend will continue, so join us to learn more about open source projects, connect with fellow developers, and find your next project or opportunity. The next one is the Python Web Conference 2022. It's March 21st through the 25th. It is online. The cost ranges from $99 to $199 US. And the information is with sessions for beginner and advanced developers alike, attendees will be immersed in Python best practices and learn how to solve complex web production problems from industry experts across the globe. The highly engaging format with 60 plus sessions about topics including Django, Flask, Pyramid, Tornado, Plone, CI, CD, containers, serverless, REST APIs, web security, and microservices and WebSockets consists of five days of tutorials, talks, and numerous networking opportunities. Access to presentations and post-event recordings will be available exclusively to registered attendees. And the last one is Open Source 101 2022. It's March 29th, it's online, it's free. And the information is Open Source 101 is a one day educational conference covering the processes and tools foundational to open source, open tech, and the open web. All sessions will be delivered virtually online and an introductory or intermediate level to allow for the best on-ramp or refresh possible. Target audience includes developers, technologists, students, and decision makers. The format includes TED-style keynote talks, as well as track sessions from industry experts. And information regarding all these will be in the show notes. All right, very good. And for the Linux and the Hamshack Open Source Challenge, I put in the same as the Amateur Radio Challenge. Check out Hamshack Hotline, PBX System for Amateur Radio Operators. And again, we'll be talking more about that in the future. All right, so so after my brief interlude between Cheryl reading the open source events, we come back to her for hedonism, which we're going to get into right now. And we always start off hedonism with food because we're all human and we all have to eat. So what kind of uh, yummy, scrumptious food do you have tonight? And have you done what we had last night? You have, right? Um, No, I don't think so. Oh, uh, well, you have to do that one for next time. That was so okay. good. It was it was ridiculously good. In fact, I'm, I'm jonesing for it right now. But anyway, go ahead and There's tell us what you got. There's leftovers in the fridge. Yes, yes, I know. I'm yes. aware. I, I okay. may be partaking. So. I see. So, <laughs> Okay, so our recipe for this time is easy skillet lasagna. Russ and I are both fans of lasagna, but it just takes too long. But this recipe makes it quick and easy, only dirties one pan, and it's done in 30-ish minutes. And for it, you need a pound of hamburger, a small onion that's chopped, a chopped green pepper, uh, one and a half cups of mafalda, which are the mini lasagna noodle-shaped pastas, or egg noodles or whatever pasta you want to use, water, Italian seasoning, a tomato basil pasta sauce, some sliced mushrooms, and some mozzarella cheese. Of course, if Russ is eating this, he must have pepperoni with his lasagna. So gotta throw some of that in there. And the instructions will be in the show notes. And for my mixed drink corner this week, I chose the blackberry cucumber vodka tonic. And for this, you need four slices of cucumber, five fresh blackberries, a cup of crushed ice, one and a half ounces of vodka, and three ounces of tonic water. You need to muddle the cucumber and the blackberries in the bottom of a rocks glass. Fill it with crushed ice and vodka, top with the tonic water, and stir. And you can garnish with cucumber and blackberry if you so choose. All right, very good. I don't think we can make that because we don't have all the fresh ingredients. But... No, we do not. But... Okay, well, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good, though. I like those those sort of fresh ingredients, fresh, uh, light, you know, gin and vodka kind of drinks. We don't drink enough of those. so That's true. We should change that. Oh, yeah, we definitely should. <laughs> yeah, swap out the vodka for the gin. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am slowly getting to the point where gin's okay. Still working on it. It just, to me, it's it has, when I smell it, and I know women and men tend to smell things differently, 
it smells like a male cat has marked his territory when I sniff gin. It just has that overwhelming smell. But as time has gone on, I'm getting where I can actually drink a little bit of gin without completely dying. So <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I never yeah. never thought it smelled like that. It's it's that whole mm. it's the the pine or the sprucey the juniper. The juniper, yeah, the yeah. juniper berry, yeah. The, the um, juniper has that same sort of cat pissy smell to me too, but but I'll actually drink gin, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. especially with tonic you know god it's like it's already halfway there to the right drink you know Jeez. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everything else is just you know like you know, you know cream on the whatever icing on the cake at that point yeah yeah so, that All would right. be really good with the lavender gin we tried in texas it probably would be yeah give it a little floral note as well as the veg- vegetal and fruit fruity yeah yeah fruit floral and, and vegetal so is cucumber a vegetable or is it one of those stupid things like tomato where it's actually a fruit? No, I think it's actually a vegetable. <laughs> I'll look it up. <laughs> okay. Well, while you're looking that up, I'll go into my drink corner and I'm actually drinking Cheryl's drink tonight, which is Lefroy Glore single malt scotch. We have, uh, our, I have reviewed a couple other Lefroy's on this show, but this is the one I bought for Cheryl for her birthday. And uh, it's kind of been sitting on the shelf for a little while because that was two months ago. And I figured I was looking around for something to review. And I figured, well, I'll I'll just have to have a, a couple of drams of this and review it. We both did try it when she opened it for her birthday. And uh, I'll get her take on it when I get down to the bottom. But the description on this from the distiller is every sip of Lafroy Glore tells the story of our distillers, blenders, and master craftsmen through the centuries. Created using techniques that have been passed down for generations, this single malt scotch is made from some of the most precious whiskeys in our Atlantic storehouse. Our master distillers select spirits from five different cast types, including ex-bourbon barrels, 19th century style quarter casks, and large Oloroso sherry butts. Aged anywhere from 7 to 21 years, each spirit brings its own element to the blend. The result is the richest expression of our unforgettable peated whiskey. Even though it has, well, I think the reason they didn't age statement is because it does have spirits in as old as 21, but it's also as young as seven, which means if it was age statement, it would be seven. And seven doesn't look terribly impressive on a single malt scotch, which is why this is released as lower and not a, an age statement blend. So it take that for what it's worth, I guess. The mash bill on this is, of course, 100% malted barley because it is, in fact, a single malt scotch. Proof is 96 or 48% ABV. It is an Isla scotch. Comes from that island up on the Atlantic coast of Scotland. Um, the nose on it, well, actually, the color. The color they call sparkling gold. That's that's not my description. That's their description. <laughs> and I guess it is, I suppose. If you shine... If you shown a bright light upon it, it is, it is particularly, it's pretty light. I mean, scotch tends to be light anyway because of the cold climate, but for having 21 year old scotch in it, it's still very light. They probably don't use a lot of the 21 year in it. The nose on it, I got brine, sea air, and salted pear, which was not bad, but certainly not as interesting as some of the other Lefroigs for sure. The taste, uh, I got rich smoke, sea air again, iodine, bitter chocolate, lemon, and salted caramel. It definitely is Lafroig y in, in that it has all that briny, salty, smoky, you know, the, the part of scotch that some people really, really hate, <laughs> but which Cheryl and I really, really love. And then the finish is probably its most interesting part, probably because of the blend. It has a nice, quick, dry finish, but that finish is followed by an aftertaste. This actually lingers a long time on the tongue. It's a combination of sweet and sweet chili spice mixed with campfire smoke, and it's it's really that sort of long finish that is the best part of this. But interestingly, this is not my favorite Lefroy, in fact, of the three that we've had, it's my least favorite. Well, actually, we've had four because we've had the 10, 10 cask, select, and this. Uh, the 10 cask strength is my favorite by far. 
then the select, then the 10, then this. And the unfortunate thing about that is while this is still pretty good, I'm giving it an 88 rating, you can get much better Lefroy for much less money. I would definitely buy the the 10 year cast strength over this any day of the week. Because Lefroy Lore, when I picked it up on the shelf, came in at $120 a bottle. So it is not cheap. And if you're looking for this kind of scotch, get the Lefroy 10 year or the Ardbeg 10 year. You'll spend half the money, maybe a little more than half the money, and you'll be 10 times as pleased with the product. So this is good. And if you want to say you have a bottle and you have $120 lying around, then go buy some. But otherwise, I would say get one of the other ones. The other expressions are more complex and more interesting and less money. So there you go. All right, Bill, what do you got? Well, I did want to say I have something that probably is available in the U.S., so no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I guess because I, I I went to uh, I went to Teeling in Dublin over uh, over uh, the past weekend, and I did pick up some whiskey, but I picked up a bottle I'm bringing home and not a bottle I'm drinking. <laughs> so I would I would sh- I would do that one tonight, but I don't want to do that one just because it's um, I thought it really tasted really good when I had the taste in the tasting room. And it's uh, I'll just mention it because it's the uh, it's a Teeling whiskey. Uh, it has uh, so they do finish it. So it's like you know, treat you go aged in bourbon barrels, like every whiskey over here is, really so far that I found. <laughs> <laughs> but they actually instead of so their cask finish. So in order to finish it, they actually finish it in brand new Irish oak. So it it actually has like a completely different. Um, yeah, a, a completely different uh, taste to it. And I thought it was interesting enough that I was like, I'm going to buy a bottle and keep that, and I'll, I'll bring that home. And, you know, who knows? I, if I'm driving to Dayton, I might bring it to Dayton. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, but anyway, so, like, that one will be a, a treat for later. It wasn't terribly expensive either. It was a distillery exclusive, you know, air quotes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, the one I have tonight that I'm drinking is actually uh, Two More Dew, uh, which is uh, a place I'll be visiting next week. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, uh, the week after next. Week after next, we'll be at Two Lamore. and uh, this is their uh, XO, the Caribbean Rum Cask Finish. Uh, I've had Two Lamore Dew before. You know, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, it's it's okay. Uh, but this uh, Caribbean cask rum finish, uh, Caribbean rum cask finish, actually tastes really good. Uh, it's the original triple blend Irish whiskey with an additional finish in the first fill XO Caribbean rum casks for a sweet tropical notes. Uh, the proof on this is uh, 86, so it's 80, uh, 43% ABV. Of course, it's an Irish whiskey, so it's here in Ireland. Uh, the distiller's nose is notes of vanilla and oak overlaid with citrus, ripe bananas, and delicate spice. And, uh, you know, hey, okay, sure. Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to say whatever they say is good. You don't. Yeah, it's good enough. You know, uh, creamy, smooth mouthfeel bringing out the, this is their taste, creamy, smooth mouthfeel. Mouthfeel. That's interesting. Uh, bringing out the deliciously deep caramel banana notes with hints of dates and raisins. And yeah, it is very, uh, it does have this kind of like sweet undertone, but not like, not like a caramelly sweet. So yeah, I can, I could definitely, uh, definitely, well, they say deep caramel, but I don't, I don't know. It's not as caramelly as some bourbons are. That's for sure. Um, and the finish they say is long and sweet with bananas, caramel lingering. And yeah, I don't know. It, it is good though. Another another big sip. Uh, yeah, so it is. Uh, it was thirty five euro dollar ruse, whatever those are, um, <laughs> for seven hundred mils. I have no idea what it is in the U.S., but I'm pretty certain it's available in the U.S. Euros, euros, and uh, dollars are pretty close. So it's probably in the thirty five to forty dollar range. Yeah, and I don't know. Is it available in the U.S. This particular one might be. Uh, it's a little more do XO. So yeah, a little more. XO. Laviar has it. Caskers, Drizzly. So, yes, okay. I would. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah total wine's got it. Total yeah, wine. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. What's well, it at total wine? How much? I want to see how much I got screwed. Um, <laughs> 30 bucks. Okay. So, yeah, definitely cheaper in the U.S. Go figure. <laughs> yeah. More expensive at the grocery store here. <laughs> anyway, so the rating here is good. So, that's, a, that's basically a four out of five. Um, 
and um, yeah, it's it's really it's actually it's really nice. I did have it with some Coke yesterday just to try it out, um, and I can imagine this as well in like a, as like a, in a margarita too. That would be pretty good. Um, it's definitely in that range that it would be uh, pretty pretty decent for that. So yeah, that's the uh, Tula Mordu XO Caribbean Rum Rum not Run Rum Cask Finish. Yummy. All right. Sounds good. And hopefully we'll get a chance to try it. Well, actually, we could just go to Total Wine and buy it. So <laughs> screw that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the teeling is the one that you can't just go buy and right, get right. that thing. So, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to Glendalough? Um, I don't have it on the thing. Glendalough. What, Glendalough. Uh, Glendalough. Glenda L-O-E-G-G-S. Glendalough. Um, I can. I, I don't know where it's at. I don't know what part of Ireland it's I don't in. know either. <laughs> if you I'll have to see where we're going, we might be going by it. Booze if, run, yeah. If you if you if you can, I'll pay you whatever. Just pick me up, like the best thing you can find there. The best thing I can find there. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I've only tried one Glendalock, but it was it was the best thing I've ever had. So, really, That's... yeah. Oh, that's over on the other coast. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's between here and um, Dublin. Yeah, it's in Wicklow. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's in Wicklow? Apparently. I was looking at Glendalough. So, oh, Wicklow. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Yeah, we might go there. Yeah. If, if you get a you. chance to go there, I would love to have something from there. Yeah, I'll, I'll see what, what I can do. I'm sure nobody would complain if we have an extra trip somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Because okay. apparently we're not going home that early. <laughs> Thank you, Delta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, that brings us down to the end of the show. We have made it through the amateur radio, the open source, and the hedonism. And we really appreciate you all being here and listening. We even had some folks with us live in the show today. We had Steve K7HVT, Steve KJ5T, Tony K4XSS, and Russ, the best name in the world, KC5CNT. So thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks to everybody who downloads the show, participates live, who supports us financially. We uh, really appreciate that, helping keep the lights on. And uh, Hamvention is coming up really soon. We're all planning on being there. I'm assuming they're still planning on having it. So with any luck, we'll see you all in Xenia in May. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. This has been the 88th edition of The Weekender, episode number 459 of Linux in the Ham Shack. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm Cheryl, W5MOO. And I'm Bill, NE4RD73. Thanks for listening to Linux in the Ham Shack. LHS is a community-sponsored podcast. Our website is located at lhspodcast.info. You can support the podcast by visiting the LHS Patreon page at patreon.com stroke LHS podcast or by using the contribute list on the homepage. We have a presence on Discord, Facebook, IRC, Twitter and YouTube. You can also drop us an email at info at lhspodcast.info or leave us a voicemail at one nine oh nine. NHS show. That's 1-909-547-7469. Visit the online LHS merchandise store at shop.lhspodcast.info for fun and fashionable show themed merchandise. Until next time, remember to always heed your hedonism. <laughs> <laughs>